Okay, it's the next morning. I'm gonna find out right now if I have glue failure or not. Cool thing is it stayed under vacuum this entire time, so that's cool. Pop it, let it drop. Pop it and drop it. There's some, some weird thing there, I don't know. I'm worried. I'm not, it's, yeah, I'm just a little bit, just a little bit worried. Whatever happens, I will resolve, but there it goes. Some of that air come back in. Let's see what kind of failures we have here. Drop all that. Well, we'll start with the obvious one. Let's see if this crackled one has a veneer stuck to it or not. does and the overhangs are okay that's good the cracked spots did not reach into the hey yeah it's it's on there mm, sort of on there maybe not greatest it's on there though okay see how it does. It feels pretty good on those ends. It feels good on the maple side. Okay. Well, that's encouraging. The worst one is decent. I can live with what it is. That means we just have to trim it. That's all right. Let's clear this thing out of here. The question will be whether I got enough glue on some of these. That's where the majority of my concerns lie. Okay, that one cracked up nicely too, it would seem. But we've got good overhangs. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, I tempted the fates of the, of the veneering gods and they did not frown terribly upon me. Cool. Well, all right, last one. I expected failure so far. Ooh, we got a little bit here. Yeah, just a bit there, we need to glue down. There was a side that did not get a lot of glue. Right. But I think I can handle spot glue in that. I've got overhang all the way around, I wanted it. Ooh, I think I might have us a gap on this side. Well, all right, I'm gonna say 98% success, which is 98% better than I expected. I suspect I was planning for full failure today, but that's good. That's really good. Um, all right, let me get the one bit that needs a little bit of touch-up gluing into clamps so that it can be drying, and then I'll start trimming. All right, so I'm letting the touch-ups dry, but I've got these three other pieces that I can flush trim now. Um, I'm going to do the one that was most concerned, most uh, most worrisome at the time, um, and I'm going to climb all the way. Anytime I flush trim a veneer, I usually use, I try most of the time to climb cut so that it's less violent to the veneer. Um, so we're going to try this. I may or may not end up with more failures here, but I might as well get this going so that I can begin the next steps. So. This little bit here that's missing, doesn't matter. This is the cherry edging that's going to be profiled up into this area. So thankfully, I don't really need to worry too much about that at this point. So, all right. Yeah, we're going to start flush trimming. Let's start this going. Okay, so I've decided on a profile for the decorative edge. It's going to be, you see it? This one. It's like a classical OG. Um, but there is, as always, 
a learning or trouble experience thing. Um, it doesn't go in three quarters of an inch. It goes in just barely a half. So what I'm going to do is where I've put three quarters of an inch extra stock on, I'm going to dial it back a little bit so that the, so for example, on this bottom rail, I didn't get veneer all the way out to this edge. There's a gap. There's a big old gap, more than a half inch. So I'm going to trim it back so that when the profile comes in, it'll just hit where the veneer is. Um, that's the plan. Um, that also will get me a consistent parallel width for that. Uh, we're going to cut the panels that'll become, cut the the MDF that's going to become the panels for the fields of the doors of the door um, and this is one of those another case of working by yourself you get a little creative with your with your solution I got a couple of roller stands you can't see they're right down here you can see that one right there um, to try to help catch some of this but we're just going to cut a couple of panels off of this and get things to the right size so a little joyful music here Okay, direct from the shed of the lumber addict, <laughs> I have, these are going to be the panels. This, well, wait till you see it. This is going to be the veneer for the panels. I used some in my back room earlier on the, there's an I-beam back there that I covered with this. Um, so I'm just going to unveil here and you'll get to see what I'm working with. There, keep that there. Right, here you go. How about that? That's pretty good looking stuff, isn't it? Can you see the figure? Yeah, you can see the figure. It's uh, That's a pretty curly cherry. And I had 20 some odd strips, and I think I might have used six of them. So maybe nine of them. There's quite a few strips. These just get to need to be fashioned into a panel. The thing I love about this stuff is the sapwood's very small, and uh, this right here would give me all the panel. You know, do three or four of these glued up, you know, like a book match. Yeah, pretty nice looking stuff, I'd say. So now I just have to figure out <clears throat> how to. How to cut this and join it together in such a way that it becomes a very good solid piece of veneer for the panel that's wide enough because, you know, we're at 11 here in the heartwood, 11 and a half. So we're going to need three unless I leave the sapwood in, and I'm not a fan of the sapwood, i got to be honest. And we're less than that here. We're at 20, 10 here. So what I'm figuring... And this might very well be crazy, is to, because it's tapered, cut a chunk. The next one I flip so that it's a complementary taper and they make a decent panel. And then do the same for a third and then have them flanked. And then probably put the bigger, the taper up, sort of, I don't know yet. But yes, this is the next task ahead of me, is to figure out the veneer situation. I believe if I did this correctly, I could get away with possibly, yeah, I've got to think through this. I'm trying to work out how to get a good solid, and I may just live with the shit, with the, the sapwood in it. I don't like the sapwood though, so I'm hoping I can get away with not. But up here, we're looking at like seven maybe. Yeah, that's seven. This is the skinniest, probably about seven inches with no sapwood. And I could leave a little, you know, that kind of thing. But I've just got to figure this out. Um, once I've decided, I'll bring you back when we're in the um, cut and join together sort of phase. I'll bring you back then.
All right, the only other free uh, horizontal surface in the shop that's left. I'm over here now at the CNC. We just got a backing plate of MDF straight edge, and I'm just sort of arbitrarily eyeballing my my cut here because it's a little diagonal cut down there. I'm just take this as many times as we need to. This veneer is really thin too, so I'm sensitive to needing to be incredibly careful with that. Okay, there's one. Take this one, I'll take this one and hopefully get about 34 out of it as well. Okay. Thirty-four is way longer than I need. Easy. Start to chip a little bit there. Got to be careful. There's number two, and our third piece here. Down a little way so it's supported. And this one doesn't need to be much. There's only a little tiny space of veneer left there, but. There we go. Now, if I can figure this right. Just drop stuff on the floor for now. If I did this right, or if I can do this right, what I'd like to have is the beauty, beautiful part, the beautiful part in the middle. Do this this side, this on this side, maybe do this way. Um, since I'm coming from, these were all this way, so I do have the chalk on here. I want to make sure I mark the side. Okay, so if I can. Let's just assume I eliminate all of the sapwood, right? Let's, uh, let's say there to there. And then here, do the same to about, uh, let's say there. Like so, how wide do I end up with? Should be over 25. 28. We got plenty. Okay, so this method will work. <clears throat> I like it. I like this method a lot because it's going to give me the widest panel and the prettiest grain, and I'm not going to lose anything. And I think I'm trying to decide if the diagonal seams is a problem or not. Because if it is, we could. Just do 10 inches across on that one and 7 on either side. That'd be 10 plus 17. Or sorry, 10 plus 14 is 24. Yeah, seven's a little light. Yeah, I think I like this. The wider I can keep it, the better. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I will get out is my... Uh, let's do this. And it is get a, a long straight edge and a long cutting surface. This will do just fine and um, eliminate sapwood. So I'm going to go grab a longer straight edge and be back. Okay, here we go. This is the skinny one. I'm just going to take it till those bits of sapwood are gone. A little heavier than that. There we go. And we just take our knief. Ah, it moves like crazy.
occurs to me, I rant about not showing you, about videos not showing how jigs get made, and I'm about to make a jig and I wasn't showing you. So I need to join each of the veneer edges. So what I've got, and basically to do that, you need one, a fence or a guide, so it'll be a straight edge. Two, you need a way of holding the veneer firmly so that it doesn't flop around while you're jointing it. So what I typically do is I just clamp it between two boards, two thicker boards that are more stable and use one of them as the straight edge for the jointing. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, in this case, because the veneer is wide and floppy, I've got this wide piece of half inch MDF, got this little skinny piece that I'm going to use. Um, and so I'm just going to put it on top and make up a couple of places to hold it on the ed ends. That should be enough, and I'll hold down. It shouldn't flop around. In most cases, I've never seen it flop around, so it should be, it should be fine. It shouldn't shift on me. If it does, we start over and we do another one. But so the first thing I want to do is mark out. I've got marks where the veneer is going to sit. I want to put a couple of holes in here, and I'm trying to decide at the moment whether I want to use screws or um, thumb bolts. Thumb thumb nut things. I'm thinking I'm not in that big a rush, so screws are fine. Okay, we'll just switch to screws. I'm going to grab a drill, and uh, I'll be right back. Grab a drill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And while I've just got it here, I'm just gonna just gonna drill in, and that actually might be too big of a drill for this. It's probably fine, but I would prefer to not find out the hard way. I'll go with that. So I'm just gonna drill a small hole first, all through both of the parts, <coughs> and uh, just hang over here. Try to keep it fairly close to the to the lines because I want the pressure as near the pieces I'm holding as possible. Okay, I'm going to flip this to this. And we'll only drill this piece. And chamfer this one just a tiny bit. That way, when the screw goes in, it doesn't uh, it doesn't mushroom and mess with me. So now, go get a screwdriver. <coughs> and some screws that I hope are long enough and also not too long. I'm not sure. It's going to be one of these two. I'm not sure which just yet. Um. Are bigger. Those are tens. They both tens. I don't need tens. I want so eights are fine. Right. It's going to be one of these two. I think it's going to be this one. Let's see how much that sticks out. Oh nope, it's definitely not that size. It's going to be this size. Yeah, much better. And it doesn't go through. Good. Okay, we'll just start it like such. I'm going to put a nice washer on that as well, but that'll do. Get that to hold, just like so. We'll come down here. I know that it's MDF and screws don't hold. It's very true, screws do not hold well in MDF. But this is a four time use situation not not scared at all bit of that one keeps the mushrooming away and there 
here's the hole. There, that should do well as a veneer fence. So that's the next bit. Is we're gonna there. That's the whole jig right there. I don't know why the majority of shows don't show that, but it's it's because it's such a simple thing, and it's not a hard thing to demonstrate. Works fine. And it's valuable, I think. If you don't, then I apologize. You could fast forward through that. But. Okay. Not sure I'm going to need washers there anymore. Now we just have to get this. I'm going to flip it around so that I can see what I'm doing. And we can take our veneer stack here. Take our big one. It's going this way. This one's going this way. So I'm going to start with the skinny one. And we'll go like this and I want to make sure I take about a quarter inch out because then I'll get rid of all that middle sapwood so just sort of line up the edges like that put this and just bring it forward here so it hangs over the edge in between our two holes just like that and whatever we've got to do to get those to align we just line them up they are not really flush because they're not very straight, but they're roughly in the same spot. And then we apply our screws. Somewhere in there is a uh, screw hole. There it is. Yeah, that'll take off a little there. And then on this end, I'm going to take a little bit more. There we go. So I've got room. I've got plenty of material to work with here. And then just snug this side down. Looks pretty snug. That isn't going to go anywhere. I'll hold it down right here. And that'll be ready for jointing. We're going to take you over to the router table and joint this now. All right, so what I didn't mention is the reason we do both at a time is that whatever happens, it's a complementary surface so that they'll fit when you open them back up. That's why I booked them together, um, and that's why we're only doing two at a time. It's complementary um, joints. Um, if I get it to the point, I mean, it's not going to be that many. So we just got a flush trim bit. We got our jig. We're ready to route. here. We've got a triangle there and a triangle here. This will go to this side now. And this one will go over here. And that has a very, very beautiful seam. And so does this one with now the next piece is, how wide did I end up? 24 and 3 quarters by the time we got done. Used a little bit, which is why we do this this way. That's why we leave things oversized. Cool. And here, I'll show you, is the panel that this is going on to. Let's make sure that it's as big as we need it to be. Uh, actually, this is big, bigger than it needs to be anyways. This is 30-something, 5, 35. We want 33 and a quarter, so there's plenty. Yep. Okay. So the next step is to get these edges glued together. So I'm going to bring out some glue and get these panels together nicely. 
And we'll go from there. Bring out the glue and the tape. Lots of tape. All right, so I've got my masking tape, which I use to slide these things together. Pull them together a little. Or drop the tape on the floor. It's another way. And just what I do is I stick it on the far piece and I pull gently this way with the tape. The tape has a little bit of stretch and that helps pick it up a little bit and just tug it right into that seam and you end up with a very very tight seam this way. And you do this as much as you need to to get a good seam on this. And we're doing this dry first because I'll flip it here in a minute and we'll put the glue on the other side. pulls everything sort of together in a nice fashion. And this is how I do book matched or an edge jointed veneer. Okay, that's glued. And now we're gonna do a real quick check the panel. Make sure I don't have any bad seams. Looking good, looking good. Looking very good. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. And then we'll see about the next ones. All right, it's been an hour. There's plenty of time for that little tiny bit of glue to, to dry enough. And uh, this one looks like it came out pretty darn good, I must say. I'm also, uh, who knows that reference? Does anybody know that one? I'm also, uh, I can't say it very well. And I can't do the hairdo anymore. Because there's none up there. But, uh, if you know who that is, holler it out in the comments. Uh, I'm just going to get all this tape off of one side. This will be the side that goes down onto the panel. This is the hide face. This will get the glue on it. And uh, with any luck, it will stay flat enough to do that. It's very thin, I just measured it, it's 23 thousandths of an inch thick. Less than a 30, a 30 less than a 30 thickened, less than a 30 thickened. It's very, very super thin, incredibly thin wood. But it's also incredibly beautiful. So, we're gonna have this taken care of and we're ready for the next panel now. I'm going to uh, really quickly check and see how this looks on the panel itself. Bring the panel up here. Bring this over here. So our panel is a bit on the undersized or oversized, whatever, whatever, and then we'll glue it down. Actually, it'll go the other way, but yeah, we'll call this one of two. Number one of two, and then we'll come up with a straightening and squaring game afterwards. <laughs> Okay, 
Veneer is joined, and uh, we're ready to start another game of Beat the Clock. <laughs> so I think I have just enough of this left to be able to mix up just enough to get all four sides done. Um, I'm going to try my brayer this time so I don't lose as much to the uh, foam roller. Um, all over but the going, so we're just going to get it get it headed out. We're going to get moving on it, so some fine music while I get to this. Okay, well, it's in. It's in the bag. Turns out I did have enough glue. Um, I used a little bit of breather mesh this time because it's so thin, the bag will seal itself off and I would get no vacuum over here, but lots of vacuum over here. So, a little breather mesh. Breather mesh. A little breather mesh. A little breather, a little breather mesh. A little breather mesh to make a bridge across, gets the air a path to travel, and etc. It works. So Whew, that was a good one. I do have enough glue. That was nice to know that I did have enough glue. Um, I was a little bit worried. Um, so there's not much else to say. I'm going to leave this in overnight and we'll check on it tomorrow. But uh, panels are now glued up. And then we'll trim them afterwards. So Seems like we did all right. The seams don't look too bad. There's going to be a little bit of a lap in a couple of spots, but I think they'll be okay. We'll find out tomorrow. I think it'll be all right. We'll see. Um, yeah, there it is. That's panel glue up is done. Hurrah! And away we go.